What's going on YouTube? My name is Chris, and welcome to GamerCon. GamerCon is a free play gaming convention that occurs every July at the 10th Avenue Arts Center located in downtown San Diego, California. I had actually never heard of GamerCon before. I found out about it through one of my subscribers, Ace of Spades Gaming. Ace of Spades Gaming said, I miss Sand Dog. Did you get a good Cali burrito when you were there? Oh, and if you ever go back again, check out GamerCon down the street at 11th and Broadway. I used to... Okay, read more. I used to volunteer at the VGA Arena. It's legit for gamers of all types. Thanks for the comment, Ace of Spades Gaming. I'll have you know, I am a connoisseur of the dank burritos. And yeah, I actually went to go check out GamerCon. So uh, thank you very much for the suggestion. Uh, I wanted to go down to San Diego and find out exactly what this GamerCon was all about. So I learned that GamerCon is much more than just video games. It's a combination of console games, video games, PC games, retro style gaming, and tabletop games. I spent some time getting to know the people behind GamerCon. I am Brennan McNeil. I am the CEO, one of the uh, lead organizers of GamerCon. I do some marketing, I do some public relations, sponsorship work. Ryan Berry, I'm the creative director and chief operating officer for GamerCon. Do the branding and the marketing and then make sure that the con kind of has bones to run on. This is my sixth year with GamerCon uh, and I got involved with GamerCon through one of the founders of, of GamerCon, Brian Belosky. Him and a few others formed GamerCon eight years ago to go along with the show that Brian and Walter Meyer co-wrote, uh, Gamers the Play. Tech support, Brea speaking. Gamers is the story of Steve Smolinski, an IT professional and avid gamer who must balance his job and relationships while attempting to save the kingdom from evil elves. And that was back when GamerCon was spelled uh, G-A-M-3-R-C-O-N versus now where it's just, you know, GamerCon. The owner, the president of the company, purchased the company about two and a half, three years ago. Um, I was the second person interviewed. <laughs> Brandon being the first person, he was actually brought over from the um, old company, the existing company at the time. He and the owner of the company brought me on to take over Art Direction. We've rebranded a little bit and we've changed over so that the new team has been at it for about two and a half years, maybe three years, just about. Uh, this is our, this is really our second real convention uh, and it's our first real convention with the new branding. So it was time to unveil the Indie Pub guys, the Unpub Tavern, which is which is independently developed board games, and it was time to introduce an, an indie developer zone in the video game area as well. The video game arena also includes the Retrocade, featuring classic titles from such systems as Super Nintendo, PlayStation 2, Xbox, and Dreamcast. I got to play Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, the Sky Deck Lounge is a rooftop patio allowing you a break from the action and to enjoy the sounds of the 8-bit jazz heroes. For now we're going to head up to the third floor to the board game hall. This is where you can find card games and board games being played. Many of the games that I found here were classics from my childhood all the way up through games I'd never even heard of before. One thing was clear, there was no shortage of games to be found. In order to find out more information about Board Game Hall, I spoke to the woman in charge of the whole operation. My name is Bunny Reed. I'm the tabletop games librarian. It was a need. I saw the need. I jumped in and took hold of it, and I refused to let go. <laughs> in my house this year, we brought 183 tabletop games, and I have a comprehensive list of all the games that have ever been available for renting out here. This year, we have 318. We have had 551 altogether. I have it all listed in the computer, and I have a, I save the listing each year of what games were checked out. And we, we like welcoming people that come from diverse backgrounds because we're open to people. Our community is the gaming community. It's something that takes us out of the realm of the humdrum, the everyday, because there's a lot of frustrations in a day to day life. There's a lot of things, a lot of repetition, and 
a lot of boring stuff. But gaming is an escape, an escape from the reality. And when we can game together, it's, it's really awesome. Um, I'm Brent Therada. Um, I guess I'm an exhibitor for Climb, the over the top mountain climbing simulator for Chronic Logic. So I think gaming gives people like a release and teaches them something that like they couldn't really experience or gives them a field of play where they can experience something that they normally can't because of society's constraints and like as an individual. So gaming lets people explore their own creativity in a very safe place. And we give them a world where they can at least do that. Just like how we let people draw or we let people do sports. People let their own imaginations go wild when they make these forms of play. Uh, gaming is important to me um, because it is a thing of inclusion. To play games by yourself, that seems, that to me seems like a very lonely experience. With computer games nowadays and the single player game, there is that, you get the same feelings of uh, connectivity with others because you get to then go discuss the game. If you're playing like an MMO, you're still working with other people to achieve the end goal. So again, it's about inclusion of other people to your circle and not forcing people out. That, I mean, that to me is what gaming is all about. We get to know one another by far better if we play games with one another. We learn how they are as a person. We learn how aggressive or passive they are. We get to, you know, experience frustration if it's a team-based thing. Or we get to experience, like, adulation. Bringing of people together to come and play is a fantastic thing that we try to really stress here at GamerCon. My biggest hope of what people get out of when they come to GamerCon is no one is truly ever alone in this world. There's always, there's always, you always got a friend somewhere. My hope of what people take, take mostly take away from this experience is, uh, you know, a sense of community, new friends, new game that they enjoy playing, uh, just a more uh, diverse and wide community. Let's check out some of those unpublished indie games in the Unpub Tavern. It's here where game developers teach people their latest tabletop games and receive feedback on how players think and what they like and dislike about the game. This has really been the first push to make sure that we are reminding everybody that we really embrace the indie, indie side of things. It's very interesting running a fan convention um, because you, you definitely want to stick to and adhere to what the fans are responding to. And as we kind of already identified, that's the Call of Duties, that's the Assassin's Creed, that's the, you know, every other big game. You really want what's being played to be very accessible. It can be inaccessible, oddly enough, to get a lot of AAA stuff going on. What is very accessible and what's a lot of times the good innovation and the risky innovation uh, in gaming and the challenging innovation in gaming and the stuff that's really pushing gaming to the next level, it's coming out of the indie guys. The indie guys are making the bold, risky decisions and, and, it, and nine times out of ten it pays so off. So the biggest problem with indie development is that we don't really have a lot of money to like spend on ourselves, maybe like development as well, as well as like, certain ambitious goals. Some, some people do, but they take years. I think uh, as any event organizer uh, hopes for, uh, you know, hope to get bigger, uh, hope to become better, uh, stronger, faster. <laughs> better, stronger, faster. Go through and do those things so that way we can become a better experience, showcase more things, uh, showcase more independent developers that are developing board games, video games, uh, trading card games, you know, what have you. The, uh, the main thing is to grow and that's, that's the main goal and I think that can be said of any event. Any event wants to grow and we want to, you know, we want to grow too. I'd like to see it as a larger venue, but at the same time, it feels so comfortable because we know where everything is here. Last year we spread out into a different venue and it was very uncomfortable. Uh, even though it was a larger venue, it was, it was not what we were accustomed to. We had more table space available, but it didn't feel as much like home. This feels like home. My big hope is that with our integration with the indie developers, and it sounds like these guys are also interested, is kind of seeing the San Diego fan 
con scene grow a little bit more. Yeah, like it's still fairly small if you compare it to like LA or the Bay Area. Like I think it's just finding the little pockets of community around it, connecting them to each other. GamerCon has been here at the 10th Avenue Arts Center for, this is our eighth year. People just don't know we're here, have no idea. The marketing side of it, the talking to people, yeah. and connecting it again side of it um, and it used to be there so it, it was funny because it, 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 it was getting big and then it and then it kind of dissolved so yeah I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm excited to work with these guys specifically to kind of regrow our community well this is the end of our gamer con adventure I'm sad to go but I learned a great bit about the people behind gamer con and what inspires them to make gamer con better each and every year I'm truly in awe of their knowledge of the gaming community as well as the repeat themes of inclusiveness and camaraderie that came up during the entire convention. With a large portion of the GamerCon convention dedicated to up and coming indie titles, I can't wait to see what they do next year. I hope you enjoyed my coverage of GamerCon 2017. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button below and share the video with somebody else. Join the nation and get subscribed today by clicking on the subscribe button below. And when you do, click on the bell icon inside of the subscribe button to get notified the moment that I release new YouTube videos. Right now my schedule is I'm releasing new YouTube videos every Friday and Saturday and sometimes Mondays when I do the Mod Monday series. So be on the lookout for that. If you click the bell icon, it will send you a message to notify you when those videos go up. If you have any other comments or questions about GamerCon or want to contact somebody for more information, leave a comment in the comment section below. And as always, you can reach me by social media. I'm available via Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And you can catch me streaming video games every Friday and Saturday evening. The times are listed to the right. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed GamerCon 2017, and I will see you in the next video. I guess it's game over.